Hey guys, and welcome back to Nomi Factory. Last time we got our Mark II fusion reactor and started to make some tritanium ingots. We also unlocked the tier 7 micro miner and sent the first mission through this large microverse projector. We now have a teleportation link to Luna, and we set up our lunar miner mission here to give us deuterium. We also unlocked crystal SOCs, which I have just finished putting to use with this new system right here. So this is passive tier 4s and passive tier 5s, the crystal and the quantum circuits. We already had tiers 1 and 2, 3 and also 6, so how can we forget about 4 and 5? <laughs> it's quite expensive in the fact that it takes 2 ZPM machines, but I think we'll make our money back and then some, so to say. Our supply of redstone seems to be building back up after that little incident last episode. But yeah, anyways, what is going to be our plan for today? Our goal this episode is to expand our power production again, I know. <laughs> you may be thinking that, well, we have, what is this, 3 fission reactors? And we are going to keep these things, these are still going to serve our base in terms of the power requirements. But our next quest here in the late game chapter is to get Awakened Draconium. And this costs 24 billion RF for every 5 blocks. That is going to eat a significant chunk out of our conduit storage. We can only buffer a total of 138 billion, so I mean that's not very many crafts of Awakened Draconium. So how are we going to go about increasing the power production? Do we build more fission reactors? Honestly, at this point, probably not is the answer to that question. And if we're not going to do another fission reactor, that basically leaves us two options, I think. The first option is solar panels, we could actually take it all the way up to Draconic tier. But we're not going to do that, we're going to go for the fusion reactor Mark III. And I know, another fusion reactor. But I think this is going to be our last, maybe second last one. We might build one or two more of these things. However, there are some new challenges in getting this tier 3 up and running. First of which is we need Tritanium Frames. This is what we kind of worked towards last episode with Mark II. So we have some Tritanium plates here and some ingots. The ingots we can set up a lathe recipe for rods. And then the rods and plates can be used in the assembler to make the frames. Minus the integrated circuit. Okay, so that leaves the two trickiest parts of this thing. Let's start with the Awakened Draconium, which you may remember is what, something I mentioned before, but I think we're going to have to do at least one recipe worth of this stuff. Okay, right now we have 51 billion. Let's see if we can actually order this thing. I encoded the recipe. Oh, it's making Awakened Draconium. Nice. Well, this is charging really, really quickly. Oh, yeah, we're back down to 20 billion. <laughs> it definitely took the power off us. But there's our Awakened Draconium and our quest. We can add a recipe for the block to ingots. And then ingots to plates. Okay, so for Fusion Mark III, that just leaves the wetware processor mainframes, which is the first and only Tier 9 circuit. And you know what? Their encoded recipe here really doesn't look too bad. It takes 8 Tier 8s, which is actually quite a lot. This adds up pretty quickly. <laughs> and each Tier 8 takes 2 Tier 7s. And each Tier 7 takes 2 wetwares, so that gets very, very nested. These Tier 9s require at least UV power, and right now this is running at ZPM. So we need to switch the LUV CEF with a UV... Wait, hold on. <laughs> Disconnect it first. <laughs> yeah, we want a UV energy hatch on this thing. Into some draconium cable. Into a UV CEF. Yeah, we're now running at UV. Can we request tier 9s? We need 4 in total for our Mark III fusion. Let's, let's try to get all 4 at once. Oh, we're missing some europium. Oh no, we're missing two per conductor. <laughs> we're missing thin silicon rubber sheets. I think all of these things are just buffer issues. We only buffer 512 of this, and this we use for some previous tier of circuits. The European we should have in the first fusion reactor. And thin silicon rubber sheets, I don't know if I actually showed this before, I set this up two episodes back. It's just a fluid solidifier for sheets, and a cluster mill for the thin sheets on silicon rubber. We just don't buffer enough of this, so a storage upgrade should take care of this. Oh, you know what, this is also where some forward planning comes into play here. So we also need to make these fusion case and mark twos, which take americium plates. We can add an assembler recipe for this. You may remember americium is something that we're fluid solidifying over here. I don't think it's something we've made up until this point, but this is where it comes in handy, and we've built up quite the stock here in the fluid solidifier. Oh yeah, that's going to be another casual 800 lumium <laughs> and 500 americium plates. Maybe we should increase the buffer on this. Or probably just take out some manually, it's going to be quick.
All right, check it out. We got our Mark III fusion reactor up and running here. This thing is, I mean, it, first of all, it drained a lot of power from our buffer again. <laughs> Just to fill the internal buffer of this thing. And second of all, we are completely broke now. We have basically nothing to our name, except for a fancy looking donut. You know, I used to prefer the tier one a lot more, but I think I've warmed up to the look of this thing. What do you guys think? Tier 1, Tier 2, or Tier 3? Anyway, so as I've previously mentioned, we don't get any power from this directly. This thing only consumes power and will give us some sort of a fluid. Actually, speaking of power, let's make sure we're not losing power right now. No, the conduit buffer is still going up, which is a good sign. Yeah, it means that we can run this thing indefinitely again. So yeah, the recipe we're running here is Nickel Plasma. And Nickel Plasma is made from potassium and fluorine in fluid form, both of which we have imported from a fluid interface. You may remember we make fluorine as part of polycitrofluoroethylene, and that is made over here. I'm really hoping that this is not going to drop. Let's take a note that we have 13,647,649,000. Let's make a note of this and make sure we're not losing any fluorine with this reactor running. And the potassium I just got done setting up over here at EV. So we smelt potassium dust in the furnace. That's buffered into a drawer. I think we need these for moats of omnium. Yeah, we need the ingots as moats of omnium, so I wanted to buffer these separately. And the rest is just fluid extracted here, stored in a quantum tank, and that has a fluid storage bus on, which is sent to the reactor over there. Oh yeah, and the potassium dust we also get from this system making fluorine. We are currently at 7950 potassium. Let's make sure we're not dropping on this either. These two machines right here are only IV, these may need an overclock. Or perhaps a PA, I'm not sure. So yeah, how do we go about getting power out of this nickel plasma? Well, there is the plasma generators, these plasma turbines. This JEI page is a little bit misleading, there are some extra variables to consider. But I think it's still true that we get 3.4 million EU for 16 millibuckets of nickel plasma. And look how much we already have here. So we need to see about actually building the turbines themselves, right? So I put in some recipes here, these are multi-block structures, look something like this. One of these Mark III fusions can support 53 of these turbines. There is absolutely no way we can afford 53 of these things right now. Maybe we can get the controller blocks, but we do also need the, the rest of the multi-block for it to function. And we also need some rotors to put inside, of which we're going to use osmium, so that means we need 53 of these. And we're around 600 osmium short, just over 600 osmium. We can get osmium ore from the tier 6 micromare. I did send a few of these while I was waiting on the fusion reactor. It looks like I did not send enough though, so let's maybe try to get another two of these things sent. We'll do them in small batches, since it still has to go through ore processing. And the rest of these casing blocks takes 29 per turbine. It's all tungsten steel. Basically, yeah, pretty much all of it is tungsten steel. Oh, this is also magnalium. Oh, magnalium we've not made before. This is... Oh, no. <laughs> aluminium plus magnesium. Okay, we have 9,000 aluminium and 30 magnesium. Oh. Wait a minute, shouldn't we be getting magnesium here? Yeah, there's 23,000 in this drawer, the same place we make potassium. Wait a second, did I not put the storage bus? <laughs> I didn't put a storage bus on this. So I've been playing around a little bit here, I've made some optimizations to some of our resource collection. I'll show you that in just a second, but first of all we're going to start with 10 of these turbines. It's a very awkward 4x3 shape here. I think we can make it work like this. Basically I want to make sure that we are optimizing this indidium cable. Let's take off a ray mode for this actually. So yeah, we're going to try to share the energy output hatches on one cable. These have to be at least ZPM on these. Make sure they're all pointing the correct way. Alright, and we're going to need at least one fluid input for all of these, and one fluid output. Yeah, I think ULV is actually fine for this. Oh, perfect placement, look at that. The rest is just casing blocks. Other than this section on the end here, this is where the rotors are going to be held. And for that we need rotor holders, at least at LUV, and this, I mean look at this, this is so much yttrium barium cuprate. I remember this from last time in fact. We can craft 10 of them to begin with here. But yeah, to account for this, I did add another blast furnace on the end here. Actually, another two blast furnaces with superconducting coils. These we both have running at LUV. The first one here is for blue steel, the second one for yttrium barium cuprate. The blue steel we use as part of magnalium. It's used a lot in these turbine casings. But yeah, the rotor holders here are going to be placed here. Yeah, now we've got five large plasma turbines here. Yeah, just to craft the 10 osmium rotors, it's 400 osmium. So it's safe to say we'll be adding these things over time. There's no way we can get all 53 this episode. And they don't stack either. I don't think there's any way of- oh, there's a quest. I don't think there's an easier way of doing this other than manually placing them all in here. Ok, 
Okay, I think everything should be configured and we're... I'm stuck on the conduits. I think we're almost about ready for the first startup of these things. We do need some way of extracting energy, which is where our CEUs come in. This is 16 amp ZPM CEUs. And I think we need two of them, since we'll be generating over 16 amps of ZPM power. At least in the future we will be. So yeah, this output here just connects all the way to the rest of our base for all the rest of the energy. Then we've got two ME fluid interfaces here, which we are going to request our nickel plasma in. There is actually one on both sides here. We got fluid laser set to only out of adjacent blocks. That goes into all of the inputs, and then the outputs of this, I believe we get regular nickel fluid, which we're just going to buffer in a quantum tank. So yeah, I think because the, all the lasers are connected, this should have filled all of the input hatches. Although I did just remember about the startup cost here, these, all of these input hatches have to be at least LV. Whenever you start the rotors basically from a dead stop, or from nothing, they do consume instantly 16 buckets of plasma. And these ULV hatches can only hold 8 buckets, so all of these do need upgraded. I'm going to make sure to pick up the plasma though. So once we got everything switched here, one actually already started up. This should be only out of adjacent blocks, all of these are going to fill. It's going to pay the startup cost, and they should turn on here. I don't know why this one didn't turn on. Oh, we're just missing laser connections here. Now they're all on? Yeah, awesome. Alright, so if we look at the GUI for these things, they're going to start up very, very slow rotor speed. We're only generating 50 EU per tick. I think this is going to go up to around 25,000 EU per tick with the configuration we have here with the Osmium rotors. Oh, and don't stand in front of the rotors. <laughs> let's, let's hook up the other side here. Should see all of these things spin up. Nice. I don't think these spun last time. That They didn't have an animation last time we played, but it's nice that you can actually see them running now. So yeah, we need to watch out for the nickel plasma amounts, make sure we're not dropping on this thing. But that definitely shouldn't be the case, as yeah, one of these things can support 53 turbines. But yeah, so long as we keep on top of the inputs for the plasma, then we have basically free... Oh yeah, we're already up to 26,000 EU per tick on this. There is durability on the rotors, let's see if we can... Nope, nope. <laughs> there is durability on the osmium rotors, that's something we have to pay attention to, but in reality we're never ever going to break these things. Oh, it's up over 30,000. Awesome, I love it. <laughs> so now that we got all of this power to work with, it's time to start addressing some of our bottlenecks before we can get to Creative Tank. I added a new centrifuge process in array to centrifuge endstone dust, which will give us tungstate, and also some platinum, which is nice. Tungstate, of course, we electrolyze into tungsten, and tungsten we use for tungsten steel and tungsten carbide. Two materials in very, very high demand at the moment. So the inputs for this thing is controlled by a level emitter here. We have a crafter crafting as endstone. That is pulverized at IV tier to give us endstone dust and run through this processing array here. And the small and tiny piles actually end up over here where we used to process this. I removed the centrifuge that was here and we now have an ME interface which supplies the small and tiny dusts. And those get packaged into regular dusts and sent off to where they need to go. I also did add this fluid solidifier on the end here for nickel which we get out of the rotors over there. And this just fluid solidifies it all into ingots. And just to make sure we keep some potassium in stock, I have a level emitter here on the machine controller, which doesn't let it run unless we have at least 512 potassium ingots. All these high tier machines have basically completely wiped out our lumium, so I think we're going to have to do something about that. So I thought we'd add in another blast furnace here, running at LUV. This is going to smell all of our lumium blend. We give this primal mana. I'm really hoping the production of Lumium Blend is going to be able to keep up with these two blast furnaces. But we really do need to top up stock right now. Yeah, 122 isn't going to get us very far here. Another thing I'd like to tweak around this base here is our Draconium EBF. So Draconium is made from Dragon Scales. Dragon Scales and Nitro Diesel. However, we do need Dragon Scales coming up for this ultimate material. And quite a few of them as well. So what I'm going to do is add a second level emitter on this. And this blast furnace is only going to run if we have over 1,000 dragon scales. We need a second machine controller and configure all of these the right way. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember if we need to invert this one or not. Or is it invert the machine? No, we want this on normal mode here. Also, do you guys spot something here? Tell me what's wrong with this picture. <laughs> Who built this thing off center? Oh, it could never be me, right? No, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Alright, so we're also going to add another PA for autoclaves. Mainly we'll use it with the water fluid, so we can place an aqueous accumulator here actually. Named interface for the patterns. And we'll go for EV for this, I think we'll just go for the 16 EV machines. And if I remember correctly, our autoclave for water was over here. Yeah, we can grab all these patterns out of this. 
Along with the dragon scales, we do also need to add some loot fabricators here for the ultimate material. We need to start fabricating both guardian scales. And also, that's the wrong one. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> I want wither bones here. How do we get this? Pristine wither? Oh, this is wither skeleton. Okay. Yeah, that's what we want here. Wither bones. The dragon scales, I think we'll just level them at for 512. And the wither bones, I think we'll just do the same at 512. Let's give them both storage monitors. And storage drawers on the loot wall. Okay, so there's been a little bit of time passed since we set up these turbines here. I think they're all now outputting 41,169 EU per tick, which I think is their maximum power output. Since we're now making all of this power, we do need a way to bank it and store it. 148 billion still isn't very much to store for Draconic Fusion. So I think that we look into Draconic Evolution Energy Storage Core, or the Powerball as it's more commonly referred to. <laughs> You can see here that the tier 7, the one we're going to go for, it can hold 2.14 trillion RF. Tier 8 right now is out of the question. I mean, for one, we can't fill that thing. And two, it's just too expensive at the moment. And even maybe tier 7 is going to be too expensive for us. 210 blocks of draconium is going to basically half our supply of this thing right now. But let's do it anyway. Yeah, we're left with 1600. 328 blocks of redstone. Wow. <laughs> I hope our redstone's recovered enough. I mean, to be fair, that's really only 3,000 redstone dust. But we do need the energy core and 36 energy core stabilizers. I don't think we've made the core yet, but we do have the stabilizers. These are used in the Microminer tier 7s. Okay, that was a rabbit hole of recipes, but look at this. For the energy core, we're only missing a couple of nether stars, a tiny bit of luminescence, and I think there was one more material here as well. Actually, no, for the core, that is just about it. So I think for luminescence, we can buy appetite ore. Yeah, we have some here in our system, but I think that's because we have a level limit on our setup to keep some in stock. So let's buy a whole lot of appetite ore here. Probably even more than that, actually. This buffer for the nether stars here, I think we'll increase to 1024. And that just leaves the 36 stabilizers, of which we're missing quite a bit here. <laughs> that's quite a lot of osmeridium. Yeah, and almondine? Almondine? How do we get this thing? I think it's an implosion compressing recipe, right? And we have a little bit of this as ore, I assume from a microminer somewhere. Yeah, the tier 3. Let's get all of this processed as well. Yeah, so I ended up doubling up the chemical reactors making luminescence. I just put another EV1 over here where we had space. And the sulfuric acid I also upgraded here. This used to be EV, we've now upgraded this to IV. And this was only buffered in a steel drum before. Although it's now in a quantum tank, so that we can buffer more for future use. All this really costs us is some oxygen, which we're swimming in, and also some sulfur, which is basically free. So yeah, we should have been buffering more of that to begin with. Hey chicken. <laughs> You've got a nice little spot under there, haven't you? This is always so satisfying. Oh yeah. <laughs> I hope I got all the items in my inventory already. Oh, we're missing redstone. I'm not sure how I miscounted this. Um, I guess we're going to have to break into the center here to access the core again. Now this is what you call a conduit montage. <laughs> Alright, did it finish? I think so. We're left with a little bit of excess. So we still don't have these energy core stabilizers crafted. We need another half stack of these things and we're still quite a ways off from these. In the meantime, we're going to set up these energy pylons, which is how we insert and extract power. So this one we want to set to insert, the arrows pointing towards the, the center. And this one we want as extract. Basically what I want here is one central input from all for all of our power sources, which for us right now is the turbines and also our reactor. So when this is operational, we'll cut the line right here so that all the input for power is funneled into this pylon. I believe we can just connect things on the bottom like this. And as long as this was within 16 blocks of the core, I think it should be in range. And then all of the output, we're going to send along to this little cable over here. And that's going to connect to the rest of our base. So by doing it this way, everything is funneled in and out of this reactor here. Or not reactor, power ball. <laughs> and it means that we are going to be properly buffering all of our power. So since we're still waiting on some crafting, I'm going to order these four at a time. Man, even just for four of these things, it's kind of crazy. But yeah, let's look to the next step in the quest book, which for us is either Neutronium or synthesizing your first Omnium. Neutronium, we need another tier 3 reactor, which is definitely not something we can get today with our situation for Lumium. So I guess that leaves us working towards Omnium. 
This is probably going to end up a bigger checklist than the tier 7 microminer. Look at all the various different resources that we need for these things. And I think the number is somewhere near 400 of these motes of Omnium to finish the game. Or at least to get to Creative Tank. So I encoded the recipe in package total. Let's see what we're missing here. In fact, you know what? Let's get a blank pin screen. Unpin everything. <laughs> oh, I love doing that. All right, let's take this one at a time here. Okay, stabilized einsteinium, magnesium, palladium, vanadium, indium, vanadium steel, arsenic, yttrium, manganese, lithium, lanthanum, calcium, manulin, sodium, solidified hydrogen, chlorine, oxygen, night slime, radon, nitrogen, mercury, and fluorine. <laughs> Only a few things we're missing. Okay, let's start with all these solidified fluids. Of which there is seven, we're gonna make seven of these EV fluid solidifiers. Oh, and we're out of space here, EV. Nothing the copy-paste gadget can't fix. <laughs> let's give this a Feral Flare Lantern. All right, seven fluid solidifiers and seven output drawers. So for pretty much all of this stuff, we're gonna buffer 512, which means a downgrade and two storage one upgrades or storage 2 upgrades, should be 512 items. Again, the number is like 400 and something motes of Omnium, so 512 should give us a bit of a buffer. And then 7 fluid interfaces to import all the fluids. Plug them all in. Pumps on the side of the machine for insert. So just from memory, I think all the stuff we're actually making already, the first one is going to be fluorine. Second one is mercury. I'm sure we make mercury somewhere. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> Don't want to make it over here, on the MV line, over here. Ah, we have a full steel drum of mercury here. Fluid storage bus should help us here. Oh yeah, and we want ball molds and all of these solidifiers. Nitrogen is next on the list. We should have plenty of this. Radon. Similarly, we should have quite a bit of radon. Oxygen, I know we are swimming in. We can very easily add this. Oh, it looks like we are able to fill the buffer on chlorine. And the last one is going to be hydrogen, which I know we have lots of. Awesome, this is looking very colourful. <laughs> I like it. Let's get a drawer controller and a storage bus. Double check all these are locked. Yep, and I think we can take all these off our list. Nice. Unfortunately, though, that was the easy stuff out of the way. Next up, we need night slime. Normally a twilight forest material, but here we make it from slime blocks and titanium. We don't have any way of making slime right now, but we have been running one slime model in Deep Mob Learning since we set this up. We can just put this into a new loot fabricator, select slime balls. And you know what, let's do this into a compacting drawer to save us having to craft the blocks on site. Then we can just set up a fluid extractor and chemical reactor. Then we import the titanium and the slime balls from our system, filter the titanium into the fluid extractor which goes up to the chemical reactor and makes us a night slime. We do have an extra level emitter on this fluid extractor so that it doesn't melt all of our titanium. I've set this quite low just to account for the crafting time here. And again, this will just go into its own drawer here. Downgrade and two upgrades. And that is night slime done. Oh yeah, don't forget to plug this thing in. <laughs> That would have been a disaster. We don't want to eat all of the titanium. There we go. Let's order another round of stabilizers. All right, next up is manulin, which is not something we are currently mixing right now. We need to mix ardite, cobalt dust, and also mana dust. All of this stuff we should already have. We're just gonna add it to the same drawer network right here. So that all goes into a mixer, gives us manulin dust. And we are just gonna buffer the dust here. Most of Omnium is not something that we're going to have on passive. There is eventually a fluid solidifier recipe, so when we have Creative Tank, we can just get liquid Omnium and just permanently fluid sol solidify these things. So we can just buffer the dust here and just add a multi-smelter recipe. Similar situation here for sodium. We have 101,000 sodium dust, so we're just going to add a furnace recipe for this one. So that's two more down. Next one is calcium, which actually we can just do the exact same thing with. <laughs> Another furnace recipe. I didn't realize that would be that simple. I think maybe Lanthanum needs a blast furnace though. Yeah. And Lanthanum, if I'm not wrong, comes from Rare Earth. Or the dust I can't see. <laughs> RE1. I think that's over here somewhere. We have lots and lots of Lanthanum. Alright, check it out, we got three more blast furnaces here, one for lanthanum, one for yttrium ingots. We use the dust for yttrium barium cuprate somewhere over there, but we need the ingots for this mode of omnium. This is just our standard one dust input blast furnace setup. We've got these on nichrome coils running at EV, and they're both just limited to around 600 ingots for both of these things. The last one over here is for vanadium steel, so we have a crafter here to craft chrome dust, vanadium dust, and steel dust. 
That's going to grab the inputs from the interface and put them into the input bus of the blast furnace. However, we are out of vanadium dust. Vanadium is something that we use. In fact, it's also one of our pinned ingots here. Yeah, we need vanadium for vanadium steel and we also use it for vanadium gallium in one of these higher tier blast furnaces somewhere over here. I think we can get vanadium from the tier 3 microminer, but there is also the option just to buy it with coins. So that is exactly what... Oh no, are we out of coins? No, we're not out of coins. They're just the wrong version. <laughs> I should really get a compact and draw. I've seen your guys' comments about that. Yeah, let's buy some vanadium magnetite. I think we already have that set up to be automatically processed here. Yeah. I added a few more machines onto this earlier on as well, just to help speed it up a little bit. But I mean, it doesn't need to be that quick, as long as we keep on top of some of the items that we need. Speaking of items, let's get another four stabilizers. And we really should remember to set this level emitter right here. We don't want to cook it all into vanadium steel. <laughs> let's do 600 for this as well. And set the storage monitor. Alright, so that's also vanadium steel off our list. We should be able to take off vanadium ingots. We have a blast furnace over here for vanadium. Same thing for palladium. We have palladium ingots being made here in this blast furnace. However, they are currently all being melted down as part of fiber reinforced or raw carbon fibers here. Yeah, you know what? Let's disable this input here for the fluid extractor so that we start to buffer down all of the ingots. And one of the palladium ores we can either buy or we can get from one of the micro miners somewhere. I don't know which variant it is. Yeah, here, we can get it from tier 5s. In fact, you know what? Let's just send a tier 5. Sure. And we'll add the drawer here for coins. That was probably long overdue. <laughs> so there are still a few more pieces of low-hanging fruit for this of Omnium. We need arsenic dust, which can come from electrolyzing cobaltite. I don't think we have any renewable way of getting this, but we have a tiny bit amount in our AE system. So we're just going to filter all of that into the electrolyzer here, and we get cobalt. We get arsenic dust, and we get sulfur dust. The sulfur and the cobalt will just void excess, and we'll just max upgrade the rest of the drawers. Alright, I feel like we're getting somewhere with this, and actually I realised that there was another piece that we can do very, very easily here. Arsenic can come off the list, we need lithium, which we, we can just actually smelt. We have 73,000 lithium dust. Manganese we can also actually just smelt. I think we have around 60k of this. If I can spell. Yeah, 62,000. And same thing for magnesium here. And same thing for indium ingots, actually. One more furnace recipe. We won't smell as much of this because we need it for indium gallium phosphide. But yeah, that leaves us with palladium, which we've seen, and stabilized Einsteinium. I had a bit of a fail over here. I I think we can... <laughs> so we can make this in the fusion reactor. However, yeah, we can't make it in tiers 1 or 2. So we have these filled with californium and berkelium. I, I think it has to be in tier 3, so I'm probably going to switch this out. We have a lot of nickel plasma backlog by now. I'm going to switch out the recipes between episodes and run Berkelium and Californium. Two things we're making from fishing over there. And I'll probably just get enough for the Motes of Omnium. We get 16 per solidifier recipe. So that's really not long to run in this fusion reactor right here. Oh man, I think it's time. Look what I'm holding. <laughs> I think we need these in a 3x3. Forms a little circle. Same on every side. Oh, wait a sec, did I miscount? I think we're, we're too short. <laughs> Hold on a sec. Alright, so now we should be able to activate this thing. And we got an energy ball, nice. <laughs> With zero charge in it. Okay, let's, acti let's actually make sure we're getting power in here. So, I think if we disconnect this line, everything should be flowing in here. I mean, we have particles, I think it's all just flown out because uh, it has to fill buffers and whatnot. Oh yeah, if we switch off the extract, we can see we're getting 138,000 RF per tick. So I guess that's what we're making with these turbines in the fission reactor. But yeah, as you can see here, 2.14 trillion RF. Who thinks we're going to fill it before we can get creative RF? Yeah, so basically this thing right now is just acting as a very expensive cable from here to here. <laughs> it's completely empty. But yeah, I think we're going to wrap things up here. We're getting a little bit long today, actually. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all soon for some more Nomi Factory.